Our world is full of mystery and enchantment, but people seem to forget where these myths come from. Well, we're here to show you the truth behind the tall tales, from the hybrid fusion of the camel leopard to the goat-sucking legends of the chupacabra. Here are 20 mythical creatures that exist in the wild. <laughs> Dire and Lost the canine species has undergone a lot of trials and tribulations when it comes to their evolutions, but before they were house pets and even wolves, they were much bigger and stronger than you could ever imagine. These furry behemoths that roam the ancient landscapes practically screamed, I'm the original party animal, as they ruled the roads well before humans had any say in the matter. They were the rock stars of prehistoric canines, and they've simply been labeled as dire wolves. Dire wolves were like the linebacker cousins of regular wolves, the kind that would have aced the audition for the role of Big Bad Wolf in a fairy tale if you catch our drift. These magnificent furballs were roughly the size of a modern-day refrigerator, but instead of chilling your groceries, they chilled their prey to the bone. Their teeth were like steak knives, slicing through the ancient wilderness like it was a minor inconvenience. You might have seen some examples of fantasy shows like Game of Thrones, but believe it or not, these guys can still be found in the wild. Life's a bit harder for these social creatures and their wolf games might have slimmed out over the generations, but people still claim to see a larger-than-life wolf monster in the woods now and then. If it isn't the wolf man, it's gotta be a dire wolf, looking for its next prey to bring back to the caves. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. They say that a skeleton can tell a creature's whole life story, but this one seems to be a full-on mystery novel. What exactly are we looking at here? Is this actually a baby unicorn or some other strange creature from a distant past? The bones have withered down to their most barest form, but otherwise it's still looking pretty good. Here's where things about this creature get a bit dicey, and that's how the pieces are all so well connected and stuck together. Although it looks like a fully decomposed creature, this tiny beast is fused together by something stronger than skin. Whatever it is, it's not going away making this really feel like there's a magical force keeping the body preserved. So, we want to hear what your answers are. Leave a comment below with hashtag missing topic and tell us if we've got a unicorn or some demonic beast lying at our feet. If you have the answers or if you've ever seen it before, we want to hear about it. Flying Beasts We're moving up to the skies for these mythical beasts, the fearsome and majestic creatures known as griffins. These things are basically the freaky love child of an eagle and a lion. With the brilliant wings of an avian daredevil and the fierce feline attitude that claims the clouds and knows it's on top, feathers and fur unite in a glorious display of regal fabulousness. Griffins were like the jet fires of ancient mythology, soaring through the clouds with a roar that made thunder sound like a distant drum roll. Their wingspan was nothing short of awe-inspiring casting shadows that made even the mightiest dragons do a double take. Picture a griffin perched on a cliff, surveying its kingdom with eyes that held the wisdom of ages and a glare that could turn a basilisk into stone. Now the lion part of the griffin wasn't just for show, these beasts had the heart of a predator and proved in time after time with creatures of prey from both land and sky. But griffins were also known for their loyalty, often bonding with noble warriors on epic quests. Imagine having a griffin as your co-pilot on a magical adventure, the wind rushing through your hair as you ride the skies on a creature that's part eagle, part lion, and all awesome. It's got a great reputation that's kept alive by today's entertainment, which is a pretty far cry from our next hybrid animal that hasn't been seen for a while. Fusion Force The Beast of Burden is an animal with an unlikely combination that you never have guessed was possible until you saw it for yourself. Behold, the Camel Leopard a wild collaboration between a camel and a giraffe. You'd think it'd be more like a leopard though, right? Well, maybe that's just because giraffes didn't have a name at the time and the spots really gave off the impression of a long-necked leopard. So that's where we're at with these historical finds. It's like Mother Nature decided to mix and match her favorite features, creating a creature that's both quirky and awe-inspiring. The African camel leopard is the ultimate fusion of elegance and adaptability with powers a step above those other animals living on the ground. Need to reach those high branches for a snack? No problem, just stretch that giraffe neck and enjoy the leafy buffet. Crossing a vast desert? The camel part kicks in, 
making it a resilient traveler with a knack for going the distance on those young, sandy journeys. The patterned coat of a camel leopard is a work of art, a beautiful mosaic of spots and hues that could make even the most fashionable zebras jealous. Modern-day giraffes are essentially built from the same elk, and let's be honest, if you've never heard of a giraffe, you'd think you'd have seen a legendary creature as well. But for as weird as they are, they have nothing on the blimmy. Headless wonder. We're moving back into the realms of ancient mythology where mysterious creatures known as the blimmy once roamed. These headless wonders were said to have faces on their torsos, often pretending to be a regular headless men until someone found out their true identity. Talk about bizarre. Just imagine encountering a blimmy on your travels, a wild creature staring at you straight from the chest, defying norms of human form. Would you try to talk to it or flee in terror like most people did back in the day? Despite their unusual physical appearance, the Blimmy were often described as a peaceful and friendly being. They were thought to be skilled hunters and skilled in various arts and crafts, just like humans. Some stories even suggested that the Blimmy possessed incredible strength and agility, making them formidable creatures in their own right. Were these actually human anomalies, born as a form of evolution that didn't quite make the cut? Or were they a separate species all on their own, driven out from the fear of nearby human civilizations? Unless we can find any more anytime soon, we might never know. Sea Dogs Let's take a dip in Irish folklore, where the waters hold secrets and mythical creatures take a plunge. This here is the Dobar Chu, a creature that adds mystery to the lakes and rivers of Celtic legend. The Dobar Chu is also known as the Waterhound and hails from the stories of Ireland. It's a creature that's part otter, part dog, and entirely elusive. It's said to be a water-loving beast, blending seamlessly within the natural beauty of its aquatic surroundings. Legend has it that this creature is also a bit of a shapeshifter, with the ability to transform from an otter-like form to a dog-like one, hence the confusion on its true look. Sometimes it's drawn as one or the other, while other times it looks more like a hybrid. But be warned, according to folklore, this creature is known for its swiftness and cunning making it a formidable entity. Tales tell of a Dobar Chu being fierce and territorial, defending its aquatic domain with a tenacity that gives even the bravest adventurers pause. The only other water creature you probably wouldn't want to cross paths with is the mighty Kraken, Arms of the Deep. Now here's a colossal monster that you've probably already heard of. The Kraken is a legendary sea monster, a behemoth of the deep sea that's become an iconic figure in maritime folklore. It's a creature so massive that its tentacles could wrap around entire ships, often plunging them into the abyss below. This gargantuan cephalopod is the stuff of sailors' nightmares, a leviathan lurking beneath the waves, ready to rise from the depths and wreak havoc on the seas. It's been described in various ways across cultures, but the kraken is often seen as a gigantic octopus or squid. Its size is said to be so immense that it could easily be mistaken for a small island and sailors feared that the disturbance caused by its movements could create treacherous whirlpools capable of swallowing entire fleets. They say that it only comes out when the light is gone, and the seas are at their stormiest, making a terrible day for sailing much worse and even harder to return from. Countless tales of the Kraken's encounters with seafarers have been passed down through generations. Sailors would speak in hushed tones of massive tentacles rising from the sea, reaching for ships with an otherworldly hunger. These stories served as cautionary tales, warning sailors of the perils that awaited them in the uncharted waters. Now that's a whale of a tale, just like our next one. Legend of Moby Dick If you know a thing or two about classic American literature, you've probably heard the whale of a tale that is Herman Melville's Moby Dick. But you might not have known that his famous white whale isn't based entirely on fiction. It appears that Melville's white whale might be rooted in tales of albino whales, a phenomenon that indeed exists. Medieval and Renaissance maps often filled their extra space on the seas with all kinds of fantastical beings, specifically with every land animal having a sea-dwelling counterpart. But on these maps, whales took a different role, one that meant favorable fishing areas instead of monsters to avoid. It wasn't until the 1700s and 1800s when European naturalists learned that sperm whales were capable of ingesting a giant whole cephalopod like a giant squid and realize that they theoretically could do the same to a small person. One internationally renowned story revolves around Mocha Dick, the white whale of the Pacific, first sighted in 1810 and pursued by over 100 whalers until its demise in 1838. 
two years before Melville embarked on his own whaling voyage. So, it sounds like Moby Dick is more than just another tall tale and instead could be a warning for the real monster lurking in the ocean below. Whirlpool Disasters In Greek mythology, there is a creature called Charybdis, the whirlpool wizardess from the Strait of Messina, the narrow stretch between Italy and Sicily. She's known for creating whirlpools that can make even the bravest sailors question their life choices and legend has it that she's had a daily ritual of swallowing massive amounts of seawater on at least three separate occasions. Sailors cruising near it had to be on their A-game, playing dodgeball with the waves to avoid being pulled into her watery vortex of doom. One wrong move and it was a one-way ticket to Shipwreck City. The trouble only doubled when her monster Celia got involved it forced sailors into a pick-your-poison scenario. So next time you're navigating life's stormy seas, remember the cautionary tale of Charybdis and maybe head for calmer waters. Honor of the Dragon On different coasts is a different set of monsters, with the mythical realms of Korean mythology bringing us something called the Emuji. It's a creature that blends serpentine grace with the aspirations of a dragon and all the bonus perks. In Korean folklore, the Emuji is often depicted as a giant serpent and its story is written with elements of transformation, destiny, and the pursuit of becoming a true dragon. The Emuji is said to be born from the union of a celestial being and a king, and it must endure a thousand years of meditation and ascetic practices to transform into a true dragon, a symbol of great power and wisdom in Korean culture. During its transformational quest, an Emuji is believed to be capable of shape-shifting, assuming various forms to interact with the human world. These serpent-like beings are often portrayed as kind creatures, sometimes even helping humans in their quests or bestowing blessings upon those they encounter. In popular culture, the Emuji has made appearances in Korean films and literature, sometimes portrayed as a majestic and powerful creature, so you know you're in store for something good if you see one of these guys come along. But if you hear a howling on a full moon, then your luck has probably run out. Moonlit Wolves Here's the classic character from the Monster Mash lineup. The werewolf is a creature that embodies the unholy union of man and wolf under the light of a full moon. A werewolf is a legendary creature with the ability to transform from a human into a wolf, either by choice or due to a curse. The transformation is typically associated with the lunar cycle, particularly the full moon, when the beast within is unleashed with a howl that sends shivers down the spines of those who dare to listen. In its human form, the werewolf is an ordinary person, blending seamlessly into society. However, when the moon takes center stage in the night sky, a metamorphosis occurs. The werewolf legend is deeply rooted in various cultures, with variations of the myth appearing in European, American, and some other folklore traditions. Werewolves are frequently depicted as both feared and tragic figures. Their stories explore themes of identity, the struggle between civilization and the wild, and the consequences of losing control. It's not easy living a two-sided life, but that might just be why they're so popular. You can see these traumatized pups all over the place in literature and cinema, where werewolves have become iconic symbols of the supernatural, captivating audiences with their mysterious and terrifying allure. But as long as you keep some silver on you during a full moon, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Bunyip the Beast Hopefully you're not tired of the sea yet because we're diving in again, but this time into Australian folklore where the bunyip comes from. It's a creature that sparked the imagination of generations with its elusive presence in the continent's myths and legends. The bunyip is described as a mythical water creature, often inhabiting swamps, rivers, and billabongs, which is like a backwater river. Its appearance is shrouded in mystery, with different accounts portraying it as a combination of different animal features. Most descriptions say the bunyip has a horse-like head, tusks, flippers, and a body covered in fur or feathers, making it a truly fantastical hybrid. The name bunyip itself is believed to have indigenous origins, with different linguistic interpretations suggesting meanings like evil spirit or devil. In various indigenous stories, the bunyip is sometimes portrayed as a mischievous or malevolent being, with the ability to bring harm to those who venture too close to its watery domain. Throughout Australian history, there have been random reports and sightings of these mysterious creatures, often fueled by imagination and folklore, but rarely ever caught on film or in person. But it does add to the allure of the bunyip as a creature that straddles the line between reality and myth. Lion of Destruction 
Here's a Greek beast you wouldn't want to meet. It's the Nemean lion, a creature that combines raw power with an invulnerable hide, making it a legendary adversary in all kinds of ancient stories. The Nemean lion was no ordinary big cat. They say that no mortal weapon could even harm it. According to myth, this formidable creature was the offspring of Typhon and Echidna, making it a sibling to other infamous monsters, but a little closer to our realm of reality. This guy would roam the foothills of Nemea, hence the name, and terrorize the locals, seeing as how it was the biggest, baddest thing around. The mere sight of the lion that couldn't be hurt by spears, stones, or swords struck fear into the hearts of all who crossed its path. As the myth continued, it seemed like the one man who could do anything about this lion nuisance was none other than Hercules. Hercules used his incredible strength to strangle the beast with his bare hands and then famously fashioned armor from the lion's impervious hide, creating the iconic Nemean lion skin that became a symbol of his triumph. This lion has since become a symbol of strength, resilience, and the triumph of heroism over seemingly insurmountable challenges. Just hope you don't run into one or you'll have to be a hunk like Herc to even stand a chance. High Flying Rock In the fantastical realms of Arabian mythology, in the magnificent rock, a colossal bird that soars through the skies with awe-inspiring splendor. The rock is often depicted as a colossal eagle or falcon, said to be so massive that it can carry off animals as big as elephants in its giant talons. The rock's wingspan is described as being vast enough to cast a shadow over entire landscapes, and its majestic feathery fuzz gleams like the sun. One of the most famous tales featuring the rock is found in the collection of stories known as 1001 Nights, or simply Arabian Nights in most translated versions. In these tales, the rock is said to be a guardian of the legendary Valley of Diamonds, a place of unimaginable wealth, but the concept of big birds had persisted across all kinds of cultures, giving way to the idea that there might be something that we just haven't been able to see for a while. We hardly know anything about the monsters of the sea, but maybe we also haven't looked hard enough at the skies either. Charm of the Chupacabra The Chupacabra, whose name literally translates to goat sucker in Spanish, is a mythical creature that's become a part of the folklore of different Latin American countries. It's the kind of thing that you can hear about all the time in certain areas, especially near places with livestock that are constantly under attack. If you see goats missing, it's got to be the Chupacabra. Appearance-wise, this animal has been depicted in different ways over the years. Early descriptions often portrayed it as a reptilian creature with spikes or quills along its back, resembling a mix between a lizard and a small dinosaur. Later interpretations sometimes lean towards a more coyote-like appearance with fur, sharp claws, and fangs. The chupacabra gained notoriety in the 1990s with reports of livestock found dead and drained of blood in Puerto Rico. These incidents sparked a wave of chupacabra sightings and stories across Latin America and even into parts of the United States. Maybe these things were the next up on the ladder of canine evolution. Some believe it to be an extraterrestrial entity, while others see it as a cryptid, a creature that's yet to be scientifically documented. We can't say for sure what the deal is with these goat suckers, but we do recommend staying away from a field of goats at night. The Last Unicorn it's hard not to have heard of the one-horned horse, otherwise known as the unicorn. It's a symbol of purity, grace, and elusive beauty in various mythologies and cultures around the world. The unicorn's most distinctive feature is, of course, its horn, which is believed to possess magical properties. Legends tell of the unicorn's horn having the ability to purify water and heal ailments. In many tales, only the pure of heart can approach a unicorn, making it a symbol of innocence and untamed beauty although in reality it might be a lot closer to a horse version of a rhino. There are actually quite a few horned creatures, from narwhals to even some beetles, so the idea that a horse might grow as a horn isn't as far-fetched as some people might seem to think. But the unicorn's mythical status has made it a popular figure in literature, art, and entertainment throughout history. It appears in the folklore of diverse cultures, from European mythology to Chinese and Indian traditions. But whether these enchanted creatures ran into hiding or followed the way of the dodo, you'd have to be fairly fortunate to come across one in this day and age. You might have a better chance at finding a hobbit instead. Hiding Hobbits We know what you're thinking. Hobbits are creatures from the mind of J.R.R. Tolkien and have only existed in the realm of fantasy since then. Well, have we got an update for you? 
In the not-too-distant year of 2003, Australian researchers unearthed a revolutionary archaeological discovery on Indonesia's Flores Island. In a limestone cave, they discovered the ancient bones of a woman with a skull less than one-third the size of modern humans, dubbed the Hobbit for their pint-sized stature. Standing at a mere yard tall, these hobbits, led by Peter Brown and Michael Moorwood, became evolutionary icons. The hobbits showcased funky brain structures, primitive tools, and a wrist bone reminiscent of ancient hominids, leaving the verdict between evolutionary branch or thyroid issues unresolved. Regardless, the hobbits of Flores etched a spellbinding chapter in human evolution, challenging preconceptions and fueling ongoing research. Though this real-world hobbit existence might be a bit different than the epic CGI version of the big screen, it seems like their quest of discovery will continue on. Looking at Loch Ness Nestled within the mist-shrouded waters of Loch Ness, a sprawling freshwater lake in the Scottish Highlands, the cryptic creature known simply as the Loch Ness Monster has stirred the imaginations of locals and curious minds worldwide. Described as a long-necked, humped behemoth and nicknamed Nessie, the creature is often portrayed as a modern-day aquatic enigma. Sightings of similar creatures date back to ancient times, but it wasn't until the 20th century that Nessie catapulted into international fame. The allure of capturing a glimpse of this elusive monster has drawn countless adventurers, scientists, and skeptics to the shores of Loch Ness time and time again. They even have t-shirts now. But despite rigorous investigations and modern technology, Nessie remains a creature of mystery with the best evidence we've got being a few blurry pictures of shadows. But even if we can't catch Nessie in the flesh, the Loch Ness Monster has become a cultural icon, adorning postcards, inspiring literature, and making its mark in popular culture. Nessie's legend is as much a part of Scotland's identity as the rolling hills and ancient castles that dot its landscape. Ogling the Ogopogo if you've ever taken a dip in the mystical waters of Okanagan Lake in British Columbia, Canada, it's possibly you could have encountered the strange being known as Ogopogo. This legendary lake monster, much like its Scottish counterpart Nessie, has captured the imaginations of locals and curious onlookers for generations. It's described as a serpentine creature with a long and wrapping body that lives in the deep, dark depths of Okanagan Lake. Witness accounts vary but Ogopogo is commonly depicted as a creature with a horse-like head and a series of humps protruding from the water. Stories about it come from the indigenous Silex people, who once spoke of a water spirit inhabiting the very same lake. However, Ogopogo truly burst into the public eye in the early 20th century, when reports of mysterious sightings and alleged photographs came about. The debate about the nature of these sightings rages on, with skeptics comparing them to floating logs, waves, or other natural phenomena, while believers refuse to deny the existence of a lake-dwelling mystery. Ogopogo has become a cultural icon in the Okanagan region, adorning tourism brochures, inspiring local art, and even becoming the namesake of various businesses. But it seems like the only way to confirm its existence is to take the plunge yourself. Mashing with the Montauk the tale of the Montauk Monster is a bizarre and perplexing modern mystery that emerged from the shores of Montauk, a charming coastal town at the eastern tip of Long Island. In July 2008, a peculiar carcass washed ashore on the beach, sparking a wave of speculation, curiosity, and a touch of discomfort. It was described as a bloated, decaying creature with a beak, fur, and clawed limbs as images circulated widely. The creature's grotesque appearance led to a flurry of theories about its origin, ranging from the mundane to the fantastical. Some suggested the Montauk monster was a raccoon or a dog that had undergone decomposition, while others entertained more outlandish ideas, including experiments gone wrong in nearby government facilities. The lack of a clear identification only fueled the mystery, and the creature's remains were never officially examined by experts. Even today, the Montauk Monster remains a cryptic conundrum with its true identity lost to the tides of time and the mysteries of the sea. Maybe someday someone will give it another look, but then again, maybe the truth is better left unsaid. Magic of Mermaids For our final mythical creature, we're taking one last seaworthy trip into the depths of maritime mythology to visit the wonderful world of mermaids. These legendary aquatic beings, often portrayed with the upper body of a human and the lower body of a fish, 
with an occasional reversal here and there, have ultimately captured the imaginations of seafarers and storytellers across cultures for centuries. The image of mermaids aren't too consistent, but they're generally depicted as alluring and graceful, with long flowing hair and mesmerizing voices that are said to lure in sailors. Mermaids are commonly associated with the mysteries and wonders of the sea. They're often connected to themes of love, tragedy, and the duality of the sea's beauty and peril. Whether appearing in Greek mythology as the sirens, in Scandinavian folklore as the Havru, or in various other cultural narratives, mermaids constantly symbolize the captivating allure and the unpredictable nature of the sea, and they seem to be a worldwide phenomenon. Their enduring popularity has also made them popular figures in contemporary literature, art, and popular culture. Whether seen as enchanting creatures of the deep or as cautionary figures warning sailors of the sea's dangers, mermaids continue to weave their magical tales, creating a timeless allure that transcends the boundaries of the real and the mythical.